just 10 miles from the center of London, the River Thames meanders through one of the most remarkable urban landscapes in Europe. Known for centuries as the Arcadian Thames, this short stretch of the river between Weybridge and Kew has been shaped by successive generations of royalty, local people and conservationists. This Arcadia is a countryside in the city, a multi-layered landscape where people, water and wildlife have all coexisted for centuries. Climate change, however, has started to alter the delicate balance that sustains this remarkable place. If we don't act now and start planning for the changes that we know are coming, much of what we cherish today could be lost as flood risk increases throughout the coming century. Rather than constructing large new flood defences to fight the forces of nature, a different approach has been proposed by the Thames Landscape Strategy called Rewilding Arcadia. The scheme offers a new way to live with water, one that reconnects people and wildlife with the lost floodplain of the river itself. The river between Molsey and Kew is where the freshwater and the tidal Thames meet. This area is at significant risk of flooding. This risk could either be from a fluvial flood, when heavy rainfall causes the river to burst its banks, or from a tidal flood, when a storm tide travels up the estuary from the sea. If these two events coincide, the water has nowhere else to go but onto the floodplain. Fortunately, the flood defences on the River Thames, including the Thames Barrier, have protected us from significant flooding in recent years. However, climate change means flood risk is increasing. We need to rethink how we manage this risk over the next century. The Environment Agency and our partners are working together to manage this risk. The River Thames scheme will help reduce fluvial flood risk between Datchet and Teddington. And the Thames Estuary 2100 plan sets out how organisations can work together to adapt to rising sea levels on the tidal part of the Thames. Whilst these strategies will ensure that the homes and properties behind the flood defences will continue to be protected, the open spaces along the river will flood more frequently in the future. The landscape in the Arcadian reaches provides an opportunity for us to manage flooding in a more natural way. We can achieve this through restoring the floodplain instead of constructing high flood defences. Rewilding Arcadia offers a nature-based approach to flood risk management, which is critical to tackling climate change. We look forward to the next stage of the project, the review of the Thames landscape strategy, and to the opportunity it brings to adapt our river size to the future climate. So, why is the riverside along the Arcadian Thames at such risk from flooding? Well, throughout much of London, the riverside has a high flood defence wall all the way along it. Upstream of Kew, however, the flood defence is set a long way back from the water's edge. By not having a riverside flood defence, it does mean that the floodplain is still intrinsically connected to the water. And this is what makes the Arcadian Thames just so special. It does, however, mean that the open spaces, the wildlife sites and the towpaths in between the flood defences are prone to being inundated by water and flooded. Here I am again, back in exactly the same spot at the top of the tide. And just look at it. This is one of the spring tides. Normally, the Thames Barrier can cope with this, but we know that this type of event is going to happen with increasing frequency. We are all going to have to get used to this sort of thing. Because of climate change, the way that the Thames Barrier is used is going to have to change. It will be needed more often to protect central London rather than the open spaces along the Arcadian Thames. Whether we like it or not, the riverside is going to get a lot wetter. And here lies the problem. The floodplain is currently managed as a dry environment rather than a wet one. As a result, the landscape's capacity to function during a flood has been greatly reduced. Although these spaces may appear natural, they are in fact highly modified, meaning their dynamism has been lost. The floodplain is simply not ready for climate change. We need to reimagine what the purpose of the floodplain is, as somewhere that can and should get wet. 
whilst conserving its unique heritage and recreation. This is exactly what rewilding is setting out to do. By using water as the rewilding factor, we can reimagine the floodplains so that they become resilient to the effects of climate change. But before we make any changes, it's important that we fully understand what local people want us to do, what is important to you. We are delighted that DEFRA, through their Green Challenge Recovery Fund, has allowed the Rewild in Arcadia project to take place. This funding has been used to complete the first stage and will be used to inform the next. We have achieved many small projects to demonstrate what a nature-based approach to managing flood risk is. Volunteers have also been used to carry out essential survey work, such as the army of citizen scientists who have surveyed the hydrology of the floodplain. Working with our charitable arm, the Father Thames Trust, our funding partners and our stakeholders, we are now ready for phase two. This will pave the way for all the works that are so necessary. The freshwater river above Teddington is also going to be affected as climate change accelerates. The models are suggesting this could be an increase in flow of up to 40%, although the exact figure is uncertain, what we do know is that the amount of water coming down will increase. We are already noticing that regularly a spring tide will top Teddington Weir and can make it all the way up to here at Kingston and beyond to Molsey Lock. One of the factors that make this more likely is the way that rainfall patterns have changed. Short, heavy periods of rainfall are much more common now than they were in the past. This is made worse because we have concreted over so much of the catchment, meaning water is channelled into the Thames very quickly. Just as on the tidal river, the open spaces along the freshwater floodplain need to be made ready for this change as it is managed as a dry place despite being situated right next to the water. Rewilding Arcadia is looking at softer options to manage some of these open spaces. What's dry now will become wet and what's wet will become wetter. In this way, the project hopes to complement some of the more engineered solutions that will be required to protect people's homes and businesses. Our project is proposing nature-based solutions that will allow us to live with water in an urban floodplain. We can make our towpaths, parks and gardens more resilient to future flooding, like here in Cambry Gardens, Kingston-upon-Thames. We know that this approach can work thanks to a trial project we completed at the Hampton Court Palace Home Park Water Meadows. Here we restored a lost floodplain and now help manage it in partnership with historic royal palaces using a mixture of modern technology, traditional land management methods and volunteers. I'm at Hunter's Pond in Ham, Willow Spiling, a method inspired by nature to protect this vital backwater from erosion, allowing us to plant greater diversity without it being washed away, stabilising the banks of this fantastic habitat. It's also a brilliant way for local people to get involved in shaping the future of their riverside through volunteering. Another fantastic demonstration project we've already completed was riverbank naturalisation. This is a great way to help control the flow of water through the floodplain so that the impact of inundation or drought becomes more sustainable. Here we worked with volunteers from the Surrey Care Trust on their community narrowboat Swingbridge 2. Access to these open spaces can greatly enhance mental and physical well-being. We want to hear the opinions of people that live, work and enjoy this river as we shape the rewilding Arcadia plan. We're not setting out to create large new areas of floodplain or even to stop the flood. We want to know what you think about rewilding Arcadia's vision for the areas in between the flood defences, the areas that already flood and those that are at high risk of flooding in the future. All of this future water presents us with a superb opportunity. We have a chance to do something amazing with our floodable open spaces, rather than just sitting back and watching climate change happen. I'm in the old deer park between Richmond and Kew. It's an open space that's already been degraded by flooding, and the area's flood risk is only going to get worse. Where I'm standing may look dry, but it looks very different during the monthly high tides. The park is not currently managed as a wet place. So when it floods, water stands for hours. Recreation and human use is halted. Slowly, the grass is dying. The river is telling us it wants its floodplain back. Instead of wet, dead grass that no one can walk on, 
We can have a floodplain that can reconnect people to the natural world, one where fish can find refuge during drought or flood, and species that should grow next to a river can grow here. I've wandered into one of the UK's most endangered habitats, tidally fed wet woodland, just to give you a glimpse of what rewilding Arcadia could achieve. These magical places are only found at the top of the estuary and have been largely lost due to the taming of the floodplain. A mosaic of wet habitats could be reintroduced here. We could have fabulous new ponds, creeks, reed beds and wet grassland instead of a desert of mud that currently exists here. Wetlands have many added benefits too. A reed bed, for example, can store more carbon than a forest. And here in the old deer park, reed beds are extra useful because they filter out pollutants from runoff from the nearby A316 road before it contaminates the river. We can look at future management techniques too. Grey's wet meadows, for example, provide such an important habitat. And rewilding Arcadia is just as much about the people as it's about the wildlife. We know that flood risk is going to increase over the next 20 years. Only rewilding Arcadia offers a sustainable future. It's very exciting. Climate change, however, is starting to alter the River Thames. Every day we stand by and do nothing is a day wasted. We must use the opportunity offered by rewilding Arcadia to create an environment that is in harmony with nature rather than fighting it. If we don't act now, it'll be too late. Our motivation should be hope, not fear of change. We can conserve and enhance the unique heritage, wildlife and recreational opportunities that this most special stretch of the river offers. I have watched the Thames landscape strategy grow and flourish. I've seen how they have transformed the landscape. I now look forward to their next phase as they update the 1994 Kim Wilkie strategy to incorporate the groundbreaking aspirations of rewilding Arcadia. What is proposed is remarkable considering that this floodplain sits within the largest urban area in the United Kingdom. It offers a real opportunity to restore the lost floodplain, to reconnect people with the natural world whilst delivering so many other benefits at the same time. By acting now, we can plan for the changes that will be needed whilst conserving the character of the Arcadian Thames that we all cherish. <laughs>